Hi, and welcome to lesson 18.4, which is about equations with many solutions or even no solution. So how can you give examples of equations with a given number of solutions? Well, we're going to determine the number of solutions. So far, when you solve a linear equation in one variable, you found one value of x that makes the equation a true statement. When you simplify some equations, you may find they do not have one solution. So when you have x equals a, so what does that mean? Well, when the value of x is a, the equation is a true statement. And in this case, situation, a would be a, a number, like x equals 5 or x equals 2 thirds, whatever it is. You have one solution. When you have uh, that number, like 5, when you have 5 equals 5, or 2 thirds equals 2 thirds, that means you're going to have any value of x will give you a true statement, and you have an infinite number of solutions. And then when you have a equals b, like 3 equals 5, that doesn't make any sense. And and where a, and this means not equal to, that means equal to, that this means not equal to, so you can't pick 3 equals 3. Uh, so 5 equals 3 or something. That means no value of x uh, makes the equation a true statement, and there are zero solutions. And so we're looking at this right here use, uh, using uh, this equation here. Adding 3 to both sides, you get 16. Subtract 2 from both sides, you get 2x. We should be pretty good at this by now. But we get x equals 8. So this is that first result right here. You have one solution. One solution. On the next one, we have this. When you solve the equation, dis uh, distribute the 2, collect like terms and such, you have negative 5 equals negative 5. And this is a true statement, and there are infinitely many solutions. This is the situation of infinitely many solutions. And then we have this one, where when we solve this, and we what, subtract 2, subtract 4x from both sides, we get 0 equals negative 7, which is untrue. It's false. There is no solution there. And that's what they're talking about right here. No solutions. So let's reflect. What happens when you substitute any value for x in the original equation in part b? So this one. Um, and in the, in the original equation in part c. In part b, any value of x will result in a true statement. In part c, any value of x will result in a false statement. So what it's saying is, let's say I put the number 1 in here. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. So on that side I get negative 1. Uh, 1. So 2 times negative, uh, 2 times 1 is 2. So it's 2 minus 1 which is 1. I have to multiply that by 2. So 1 times 2 is 2. And then 2 minus 3 is negative 1. On this side I get negative 1 as well. See, I, I just picked 1 and I got a true statement there. So no matter what, you can pick negative 2,605 for x. If you plug it in both sides and you do the order of operations, you'll get the same number on both sides. Here, if I put 1 in for here, and, and okay, look at this. 4 times 1, that's 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. And then here, 4 times, put that 1, 4, that's 4 minus 5 is negative 1. And if you think about it, if you multiply a number times 4 and add 2, how could you ever get 4 times that same number, subtract 5, and end up with the same result? You know, How could you add 2 and subtract 5 and expect to get the same number? You never will. That's why there's no solution. So in this, I have 2x plus, I, I did this right up here, I did it right up here. I subtracted 2x, I added 8 to both sides, and I got uh, 3x equals 9, which means x equals 3. That's one solution right there, x equals 3. Done. The next one, this I did here. Uh, I distribute the 3, so I got 12x plus 9 minus 2, and I get 9 minus 2, which is 7. And then on this side, I just kept that. I, and you know what? I really just stopped right here. 12x plus 7 equals 12x plus 7. I have the exact same thing on both sides. I mean, when you see that, you can just stop. 
and say, okay, I'm going to have infinitely many solutions at that point. If I subtract seven, from, uh, what if I subtract 12 from both sides? Then I'll have seven equals seven, and then that will satisfy what happened here, right there. Infinitely many solutions. And then the last one, I have this right here, and I did that here. I subtract three x from both sides. I get negative nine equals five, and there is an untrue statement. There's no solution to that one. That's why I wrote no solution. Next, I have this. Writing equations with a given number of solutions. You can use the results of linear equations to write an equation that has a given number of solutions. Write an equation with in one variable it has no solution. We'll start with a false statement. Okay, because it has to have no solution. So 3 equals 5. Start with that and add the same variable to both sides. So you get 3 equals 5 and then add x to both sides. Done on that part. Next, add the same constant to both sides and combine like terms on each side of the equation. So we add 7 to both sides, which sounds great. And that makes sense because 3 plus 7 is 10 and 5 plus 7 is 12. Verify that your equation has no solutions by using the property of equality. So you can subtract x and you get 10 equals 12. And really, I don't even see we don't necessarily have to add 7. We could have stopped right here and said, oh, there's there's no solution to that. But they wanted to step it up a little bit. Explain why the result of the process above is an equation with no solution. OK, you started with a false statement. We started with that right there. And performed balanced operations on both sides of the equation. This does not change the true or false nature of the original statement. So everything you add on to that, as long as you did it to both sides, adds on to the nature of that statement. Complete the equation so that it has the indicated number of solutions. OK, we want something with no solution. 3x plus 1. OK, so I have the 3x, and that's the same. Uh, so if I add 1, and maybe if I add 4, this could be any number. It could be uh, 8, 5. 256, whatever it is, as long as it's not 1. Because if it's 1, then you've created something with an infinite number of solutions. And by the way, infinitely many solutions, 2x minus 4 equals 2x, that has to be 4. It can only be 4. If it's anything else, you'll have no solution. And that's what you have to know about uh, writing equations with uh, uh, solutions, many solutions, or even no solution, and sometimes one solution. Thank you for watching.